Okay, this is second semester math, seventh grade, unit two, lesson two. Vocabulary review, what is the reciprocal of two? Does anybody have the answer? Can you walk me through that answer? Miranda. Two as a fraction would be two over one, so. Very good, so let me pause you while I put this in the notes. So two, if I rewrote two as a fraction, you said it's gonna be two over one. That is correct, okay. And then continue. Okay, and you plus that, and that would be one half. One half. So the reciprocal <laughs> equals one half. Okay? How many of you guys got that? Nice. If you didn't get it, do you remember it now? Do I need to explain anything to you? So a reciprocal, basically you take the numerator and you make it the denominator, and you take the denominator and you make it the numerator. So what Miranda said, Miranda said is you flipped it. You flipped the fraction. Okay, now, <clears throat> but in math, you don't use, that's kind of like slang for reciprocal. You use the correct terminology, reciprocal. All right, so for number two, who can walk me through number two? Um, Cruz in the back. What's that? Okay. No, you're you're about to finish up the you're about to you have to put what? All right. So Cruz um, kind of got his steps mixed up, but it sounds like he had the process down. So you have to put twelve over one. You make the whole number twelve into a fraction, and then you said correctly. You take one times twelve, right? And that gave you twelve. And then what's the denominator going to be? Four, and then what does that simplify to become? Very good. Uh, now there is a way to simplify this before the last step. You can cancel. Twelve is the same as four times three, right? And then you see that the fours cancel out, so one times three over one times one, so three over one is the same as three. So you can cross cancel. Some of you guys. You're good to go with that cross canceling. If you're not, just understand the bare minimum basic method. Got it? Okay, if you didn't understand cross canceling, just go with the, the process we discussed at the start. Okay, who's got number three for me? Um, yes, go ahead. Um, I put 20 over 1. Right, we wrote the whole number 20 as a fraction 20 over 1, and we're going to multiply that by 1, ha one tenths. And then what do we get back? I cross cancel. Okay. Then Okay. So we get one and two on top, and then I, um, I multiplied that and I got two left. Okay, so you got two over one. Um, so you cross count before and then you end up getting two, right? So let me, let me fill in the details. So 20 times one is 20, and then one times 10 is 10, and we see that simplifies to two over one, which is just two. Or you could have cross canceled ahead of time and said that 20 is the same as 10 times two and that the tens cancel out, oops, the tens cancel out. And so you get two over one, which is just two. Okay? Chin, can you walk me through the next one? Right, very good. Times one third, okay, now what do we got? Okay, so you multiply the numerators, you get 15. Uh -huh, and you multiply the denominators, 1 times 3, and you got what? 3. And we have an improper fraction now, so you have one more step to go. So you already know how many times 3 goes into 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you simplified, and your final answer was 5. Very good. Okay, some of you guys may have cross canceled. If you did, you might have recognized that 15 is the same as 5 times 3, and that your 3s would then cancel leaving you with 5 over 1, which is just 5. Okay? Joel, can you do the last one? No. You're thinking of adding and subtracting. That's different. Uh, you don't you don't you don't take the reciprocal on these. Can somebody help them out? Right, Jakari, can you walk them through it? So, right, and that's going to become what? 
right? So I have 1 half times 9, which becomes the fraction 9 over 1. Very good. And then go ahead. What's that going to become? Right, so 9 times 1, the numerator is 9. And then 2 times 1 is 2. And we have an improper fraction. Can you rewrite this improper fraction as a mixed number? You remember how to do that? Mm -hmm. So what is this going to become? Do you want some help? OK. Uh, Michaela, can you help Jakari out? So 2 goes into 9, 4 times shh. 2 goes into 9, 4 times, 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have a remainder, so 4 and then 1 half. So let me show you how to do this. <clears throat> if 9 is in the house and 2 is out of the house. Members of 8, 1 and 8, 2 going on a field trip, please report to the front. Okay, so Jakari, if you take a look, I did the I did the division. Two goes into nine four times, and then I have a remainder of one. And so, do you see the remainder of one is black? So, if you look at the answer, I color coded. My numerator was the number one, which is the remainder, and four is how many times two goes into nine, right? And then two stayed in the denominator, four and one half. Okay? Are we good? Now, question. What's your question? Is, is it about this stuff? Is it about what I just did over here? Okay, save it for the end of the lesson. I'll, I'll come back to your question. All right, so moving along, I'm going to go ahead and read this because I want to put this on the class YouTube channel. What you'll learn, to find the area and perimeter of a triangle, new vocabulary, base of a triangle, height of a triangle. Why learn this? You use perimeter when you solve problems involving borders. You can find perimeter to see if you have enough mirror material to sew a border around the triangle, triangular quilt piece at the right. So do any of you guys have um, an old quilt at your house that maybe some of your family made? It's, so a quilt, I'll tell you what a quilt is. It's like um, it's pieces of scrap material that you sew into a blanket, okay? And it's shh. in this picture. This is a quilt, and in black around this triangular section of the quilt, this piece of material that's in the shape of a right triangle. They want to know the border that is the perimeter. Do you guys understand? So the border of this piece of material is the perimeter of that triangle. Do you guys understand? So if you had to find the perimeter of the triangle using these side lengths, that's the first example. So take a look at this question. Finding the perimeter of a triangle. Quilting. How much material do you need to sew a border around the triangular piece on the quilt above? So we're going to use this triangle right here. And you need to figure out what the perimeter is. Now, remember from yesterday, the perimeter is the distance around something. Okay? So if you were to walk all the lengths of the sides from start and then return to one lap, what would that distance be? So I need you guys to figure this out. So we're working with decimal numbers. So hopefully you guys remember how to take the sum of decimal numbers. Go ahead and do that really quickly. Yep, that's what the sum means. It's just like yesterday when we found the perimeter of a parallelogram and the perimeter of a rectangle. Shh. This is not a group effort. Hello. Shh. When you're done, if you could put your pencils down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so when you find when you when you add or subtract decimal numbers, can somebody remind the class how do we how do we go about doing that? Does anyone remember? Anybody, anybody remember? Um, Alexis. Oh, I'm stepping with the little one. Multiply and, and um, the writing. So the same as the like. Mm, no, 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 no. It, the decimal is important, but a lot of students tend to confuse confuse how to add and subtract decimals with multiply and dividing decimals. So uh, Bryce in the back, can you remind the class? Okay, so I have a lot of people talking and Bryce is trying to share with you the correct way to add numbers that are decimals. Could you repeat that Bryce? So we have to line up the decimals and then we take the sum. So our values that we have to add up are 4 and 7 tenths. 3 and 4 tenths, and 3 and 1 tenths. Okay? Now, we're going to take the sum. 7 plus 4 plus 1, what's that going to be? Four. Carry the 1. 4 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3, what's that going to be? 11. 11. Okay. Now, how do we know where to put my decimal? Nima? Do you know? Take a guess. Atisha? You're thinking of multiplying, so oh. that's what you do for multiplying. Robert, can you help her out? So, Robert's correct. He said you just bring the decimal straight down. That's why we line it up. We line up our decimals, and that's where our decimal sits in that same place value, okay? Between the tenths place and the ones place, okay? So, that's not my answer. You have to be careful and make sure you have the units. Chin, what's the units going to be? Um, nope, you're thinking about, we didn't multiply inches. We didn't multiply oh, units. We just add them. Right. So what's it going to be? We're talking about distance. Go ahead. It's just going to be inches. So it's going to be 11 and 2 tenths inch perimeter. OK, now I expect you guys to know this one. They don't give you a picture. I need you to read this to yourselves and quickly answer this to yourselves. Khadija, can you share the answer with the class? Well, first, can you read the question? Right, so Khadija, Khadija's answer was 24, and how did you find 24? Um, Very good. So if you take the sum of all the sides of the triangle, you get 24 centimeters. Okay, <coughs> moving along. There's way too much talk in the back. All right, so this is important. This is an important lead-in into the um, the objective for today. We're trying to find the area of a triangle. So we just reviewed finding the perimeter of a triangle. Find the area of a triangle again. I want to take you guys back to how do you find the area of a rectangle? So watch this first triangle right here. I'm going to draw. A rectangle that goes that goes with this triangle. Okay. Okay. So I have a rectangle. How would you find the area of this rectangle? Base times height, right? But what I want you to notice is, if you look at this first, um, like half of the triangle that's split by the height, do you see that this triangle and this triangle are e the same triangle? OK. And do you see that on the other part of the triangle, this triangle and this triangle are the same triangle? So what I need you to think of is this triangle right here, 
plus this triangle right here is half of the rectangle area. Do you guys understand? So can somebody share with the class what's the area of a triangle, Nima? It's one half the base times the height. So the area of a triangle, and there's two ways you might see this formula, area of a, and I'm just going to put the symbol for a triangle, equals one half the base times the height. And you might see it another way. It might be written this way. And it's the same thing. It might be written this way. The base times the height divided by 2. OK? It's the same formula. Now, if you look over here, this middle triangle, what kind of triangle is that? A right triangle. Those are the easiest ones to find the, the area of. If you notice, a right triangle is exactly half of that rectangle I just drew. So again, one half base times height. Over here we have another triangle, and it's a little different. But again, it's going to be one half base times height also. But what we're missing is this piece right here. Which is that piece right there. You guys see that? So it's still one half the base times the height. Question, Robert? So all it is is how much space you have Right. So the hard part is kind of like what we did yesterday, the parallelogram, is figuring out what part of the picture is the base and what part's the height. Now, how do we know what part's the height? What do we have to always look for? Do you guys remember? Look for the box. And what's the box telling us? That, is, that it is perpendicular to whatever side it intersects, right? At the box. OK, so that is just kind of the background of why the formula for area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. Here is um, what the book gives as an explanation. Uh, the formula for the area of a triangle follows from the formula for the area of a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram equals base times height. And if you notice, they draw the diagonal. And then they show that, hey, look, you have two equal triangles here, right? And so you only want the area of one of those triangles. That's why they get 1 half the base times the height. Now, going over here, take a look at the key concept. Area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is equal to half the product of any base and the corresponding height. And here's the formula. And here it's written a little differently. But what I want you to see right now is some of you guys slipped up on the quick check because of the way they rotated the picture. So I'm going to rotate this around. Do you guys see how you have to be careful? You have to look at the orientation of the picture, not let that confuse you. You still have to figure out which is the height and which is the base. Any questions? Robert. Right. So they'll, they'll often rotate it to try to throw you off. Right. And if you guys want to rotate your laptop to figure it out, I'm OK with that. <coughs> now, let's put this into practice. Here you go. When you find the area of a triangle, remember that you only need the length of the base and the perpendicular height of the triangle. So what I need you guys to do really quickly on your own, see if you guys have an understanding of this, I want you to find the area of these two triangles. First one, pretty easy. I think most of you get that. That, that demonstrates you have a basic level understanding. This one's a little more challenging than the second one. So see if you can get these figured out on your own. When you're done, put your pencil down so we can discuss it.
Okay, for this first triangle, who can tell me what is the base of the triangle? Now, if you notice, they give you some extra measurements, but that's just there to throw you off. What is the base of this triangle? Well, Mac. Eight. Eight feet, very good. So here's my base. And what's the height going to be? Five. Five, excellent. There's my height. And then here's my formula right here. I need one half the base times the height. So if I fill in my values for base times height, I have eight feet. And I need to multiply that to five feet. OK. So Jeffrey, what happens when I simplify this? What do I get back? 40. Right. So what's in the parentheses becomes 40. But be careful because you need to know the units. What's the units going to be? Is it 40 feet? Square. Feet squared. So 1 half times 40 feet squared. Now we need to simplify this again, last step. What's it, what do we get when we, we wrap this up? I have 1 half times 40 feet squared. Well, think about the warm-up. How do we do that? Remember the warm-up? If I have a whole number, i got to fix that, right? OK. Some of you guys are, are making that connection now. Good. It's going to be 20 feet squared. Nice. Good job, Jeffrey. OK, so let's take a look at this next one. This one was a little more challenging. Can I get somebody to help me identify the base and the height for this problem? Uh, Tata. Um, so the base is nine. Nice. The base is 9, correct. And the height is 12. And the height is 12. So 9 meters for the base, and the height is 12 meters. Nice. Now, if that threw you off, let me show you how you can look at it. I'm going to rotate the picture. OK. Does it make sense now why 9 is the base and 12 is the height? Do you guys see that now that I rotated it around? OK. So I'll rotate it back because that's what we have to recognize. They might change the orientation to confuse you. So Tata is correct. We're going to find the area. And that is equal to 1 half 9, times tw 9 meters times 12 meters. So Tata, can you simplify that for me? What's, the pr what's happening inside the parentheses? So 12 meters 108. 108. Is it just 108? Just, oh, wait. Um, I mean, meters squared. Meter squared, very good. OK, now I need to simplify this further. And so what is that going to become? 54 meters squared. Nice. Any questions? Right. Remember, where it's always going to be half the base times the height. OK. But now you're not going to make the same mistake on the quick check problems. So let's go ahead and get these done. First one's pretty easy. Second one's a little more challenging. See if you've got to identify the correct parts we need for the formula. All right, Chen, I'm going to give you a shot with this one. What's the base? Very good. So the base of this triangle is 36. So we have 36. And I'm going to write this just a little differently than I did with the earlier formulas. So area equals 
base times the height divided by 2. What's the height going to be? Um, 12 meters. Good. OK, let's go ahead and simplify this. So 36 times 12. Mm -hmm. What do you get back? So you ended up with 330 meters squared, 32 meters. OK, now we need to simplify that. So I got 332 meters squared divided by 2. What's that going to become? You're doing the right mental math. You said half of 300 is going to be 150, right? And then you said half of 32 is going to be 16. So 150 plus 166 meters squared, yes. Yep. He did his math wrong? Where did we go wrong? Oh, it's not. He forgot to carry. OK, no, good catch. Did you guys get 432? Yes. OK. No, shh, 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 shh. Good catch. We all make mistakes. Quiet, quiet. But now it's a little easier, right? So what's half of 400? 200. And then half of 32? So that means 216 meters squared. OK, any questions about that problem? Are we good? Now I'd like to have a volunteer for the next problem. Who can tell me what is my base over here? Michaela. Nice. The base is 16, correct? So 16 <coughs> meters. And Michaela, what's my height? Your height is six. Nice. The height is 6 meters. Very good. Six, oops, thank you, centimeters. OK, so I have 16 centimeters times 6 centimeters. And the formula says the base times the height divided by 2 is the area. So let's go ahead and work this out. Any questions about the part she identified as the base and the height? Everybody got that? OK. Can you go ahead and complete the calculations for us, Michaela? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 96 centimeters squared. Everybody get that? OK. And then go ahead and finish it up for us. 48 centimeters squared. We're almost done. OK, anybody have any questions about this problem? What's your question? It's just to throw you off. Yeah, no, I, that's what I said earlier. Just like over here, you don't need to know 19 meters for the first problem, or even 26 and 8 tenths meters. That's just extra. It's just there to throw you off. OK. Yeah, but this wouldn't be the base. You understand? Right. If I flipped it around, it would make sense. Yeah. OK, so we're almost done. I want to finish this up. A triangle that has a 90 degree angle is an what blank triangle? It is a right, a right triangle. Now, I'm going to read this to you. Each triangle's perimeter is 15 centimeters. Find the length of the missing side. So they're giving you, remember, they're get, you have three different sides in a triangle. They're giving you two of the sides. And you need to figure out the third side. So this first set of sides, what would the third side have to be? Six. 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 Very good. OK, this next one over here, two centimeters, seven centimeters, what would the third side have to be here? Six. It would be six centimeters again, right? Because six and two is eight, eight and seven is 15. And what about this last one? Seven. Seven centimeters. Very good. 
OK, so now, if you notice for this next set of problems, they're not giving you a picture now, right? They're telling you the base and the height. And they want you to find the area of the triangle. So they're not even giving you a picture. Sometimes they might give you a picture. Sometimes they might not. But we still need to be able to calculate the area if we don't have all the information in a picture form. So remember, area is equal to the base times the height divided by 2. OK, so who wants to walk me through the first problem? Uh, Joel, can you walk me through it? Joel, what is it? What's in my numerator? What's the base going to be? 4. And I need to multiply that to what? Very good. Right. So then you get 20. But keep the units. Make sure you know the new units. It's going to be 20 what? 20, it's not 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters squared divided by 2. And what's 20 centimeters squared divided by 2? It equals 10 centimeters squared. Make some room over here. All right, who's got the next problem? Who can walk me through it? OK, Khadija. 2 inches times 7 inches. We get, you're correct, 14 inches squared, good, over 2. And what's that going to give us back? 7 inches squared. All right, last question before we wrap it up. A carpenter has blueprints for a wooden triangular patio. The base is 5 meters and the height is 7 meters. What is the area of the patio? Go ahead and work it out really quickly. We're still going to use the same formula. Gabby, can you walk me through this problem? Mm-hmm. Yes, and what do you get when you multiply the base and the height? Uh, what is it? What's the base and the base times the height? Gives me back what? So multiply, shh, multiply the base times the height. Uh, five times seven is thirty-five. So quiet, please. Excuse me. So our base was five meters. And we're going to multiply that by my height, which is 7 meters. And you told me that was 35, but it's 35 what? What were my units going to be? Meters to the second power. Thank you. And then we still got to divide all that by 2. What's 35 divided by 2 going to be? You can make it a mixed number. That's correct. You can do that. There's two answers that are acceptable. So she makes a good point. And actually, the first period class had the same question. So I, I like that she, she brought that up. Yep. So this becomes 17 and 1 half meters squared. Or if you divided this out, you would see that you got 17 and 5 tenths 
meters squared. Both answers are acceptable. 